Hello, everyone. We're going to try this again. Welcome to KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast. I'd like to apologize to those. I ran into some technical difficulties. Um, it actually started last night with the technical difficulties. As you know, we usually on Sundays at 11, we started back up with our artist interviews. Uh, unfortunately, one of the artists uh, that I was dealing with, they had an issue with getting the Chrome on their uh uh, downloading chrome on their computer so i had to quickly make an adjustment and uh i even had enough time to write a blog about it and uh you know and the, and the blog i wrote last night in the midst of changing because it was about 8 39 o'clock last night and i did and before i had realized that this may you know could be a problem so i had to make a quick adjustment I produced another show, and it's basically uh, a show where um, it's going to be a solo show with myself, uh, talking about some happenings at my studio, projects I'm working on, and art, and things of that nature. So right now, I'm uh, going to read you the blog that I wrote last night, too, because in the midst of all of that, I said accountability, um, adjustment, and being creative. So what I decided to do was, I said, you know what? I'm going to make this into uh, a positive. In other words, take lemons and make lemonade. And hopefully we'll be able to get her on there. So I wrote a blog and it actually posted today onto my website. And I will share it on social media later. But the blog um, is uh, entitled uh, Embracing the Unexpected, a story of accountability, adaptability and creativity. But before I get going, let me get a sip of Okay, so as the clock ticked down to the mere hours before my scheduled podcast interview, I found myself facing an unexpected challenge. My guest and artist I was eager to feature encountered technical difficulties that prevented them from downloading Chrome, our preferred platform for the interview, actually our only platform. Panic could have easily set in, but instead I saw an opportunity to showcase the essence of adaptability and creativity. In less than 14 hours, I made the decision to transform the episode from an artist interview to a solo podcast where I can shine the light on the vibrant happenings at KJL Art Sanctuary Gallery and Studio. This unexpected shift became an exercise in embracing the change, embracing change and making the most out of a situation. I even wrote this blog. With a deep breath and a clear mind, I dove into, re into producing this uh, podcast, sharing the story of my studio and the incredible artists uh, that we support with this program and events and workshops that are up on the horizon at KJL Art Sanctuary. Um, reflecting on this experience, I realized the importance of effective communication. In the future, I'll ensure that guests are informed in advance about the technical requirements for our interviews, such as the need to log in using Google Chrome. This proactive approach will help to minimize potential hiccups and ensure smooth sailing for all involved. In the end, what could have been a moment of panic turned into a testament to our ability to pivot and produce under pressure. It's a reminder that in the world of podcasting, as in life, flexibility and creativity are valuable assets. And as we navigate the unexpected twists and turns, we emerge stronger, more adaptive, and ready to tackle whatever challenges come our way. So that was my blog there. So we're going to get right into the show. So what we're what I'm going to start with is let me see here, ladies and gentlemen. I got my papers here. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to start, um, I want to tell you guys about a project I've been working on with the Arts Council of Princeton. It's a puppet making workshop. Um, I will be doing it also at the summer at Arts Council of Princeton. And I also will be doing some puppet show or puppet making workshops at my studio as well um i'm looking down my controllers down here i'm not i'm <laughs> i want to try to keep my eye on the camera too um uh because i'm uh, working some controls i've actually uh gotten a moderator at this point so uh which will be starting uh sometime in the near future um so what i'm going to do is I'm going to show you a short little video to give you an idea of what we were doing at the Arts Council of Princeton and what my workshops uh, were about. And I'll explain a little bit more. But this is some of the footage of what was happening 
Um, and it's about a three minute video. So here we go. All right now so as you got to see uh, let me tell you a little bit about the workshop we did and i'm also going to be offering that workshop um at my studio as well we're going to be running it back again this summer at the arts council of princeton but what happens is they come in uh we teach them how to write a script um they that's the first you know session they really gotta uh, decide on what their story is going to be they gotta write their script figure about the characters their script <laughs> and um, uh, figure out all their characters and everything. Then the next, they create a background because each individual that gets inside that booth, the background is changed. So they have to create their background. After they create their background, then they create their puppets so that they're in proportion with their background. And then after that, they start to, they do their rehearsal and then there's a live performance. They get inside the booth. Uh, it's a really, really fun project. What the kids learn is every aspect of putting on a any type of production. From that point, you never know if you're gonna have your next playwright. You never know if you're gonna have your next actor or a set designer or a costume design person because you have to deal with every aspect. You learn a little bit about everything. This is a pro this is a workshop that I really, really enjoy doing and I am going to expand it. So look for it to come up on my uh, on my website uh, soon. Um, as I'm moving along here too, uh, let me give you an idea about some of the workshops which brings me to uh some of the workshops that i'm going to be doing at uh my studio so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you over i'm going to share my screen with you and get you to my website and uh so if you were to go to my website you can see here uh you may have to pull up in your screen but you will go to my workshop page and when you click on the workshop page you'll see 
we have one workshop here. It's a Paul Clay workshop. So this is a paint like Paul Clay workshop. And then we also have our, another workshop here, which is a uh, paint like David Hockney. These are David Hockney inspired paintings. That's one workshop and that starts in March 21st. Uh, let me go back to the other one. Um, the Paul Klee workshop starts um, on March 19th to April 2nd. That's Thursday. That's Tuesdays. And then March, we start with uh, Paint Like David Hockney's. That's Thursdays. Then we have, and I'm the instructor for those classes. Then we have gel press printing. That's Monday, 6 to 8 p.m. starting April 1st. And then you can take an online workshop that's flexible. You can book a specific time to do an online workshop with me. Also, I have a guest uh, hobbyist, uh, Rachel Orring, and she's going to be conducting a crafting 3D art uh, with paper, silicone, and curves workshop. That starts in May of 2024. And she's also going to be teaching the Wire Wonders, crafting your own CD tree. And last but not least, Last but not least, we have uh, art parties here, KJL Art Sanctuary paint parties. It's $45 per person. We give out three door prizes and, uh, you know, it's three hours, half hour set up. And uh, so it's three and a half hours. It's $45 per person, minimum of 10. And it's right at our studio. Uh, my studio holds about 10 to 20 people comfortably for a paint party in the main gallery uh, area. So I'm going to remove that for a second here. <clears throat> okay. So now let's keep moving right along. It's different doing it in uh, one of these and you're doing it in solo mode. <laughs> Listen, if anybody has any questions or anything, uh, feel free. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go up here and share with you some of my social media information. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some other things happening. So let's go here. If you'd like to support, uh, that is our cash app at the bottom. If you'd like to email, it's kjlartsanctuary at gmail. My website, kjlartsanctuary.com. On Instagram, it's at kjlartists. And this is the YouTube channel where this will be rebroadcast. If you're not looking at it on YouTube, please, please, please remember to, you know, like, uh, share, subscribe my YouTube channel. Um, it's, it's a new channel. I've only been at it for about four months. And uh, please, please, you know, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. I would be so grateful. And periodically I have giveaways for uh, my subscribers on YouTube. Okay. Another thing that we have at KJL Art Sanctuary is we have, uh, I have studio space that's actually, you can come and rent a uh, studio space. It depends on the hours uh, that you want to use it. Um, and uh, so you can uh, rent studio space. If you just want to come in and you need a space to uh, create a large piece of artwork or if you want to have a place you could just come and get away and uh to spend a day painting i do have the uh um uh, one-on-one -on -one and you know studio rental uh if you would like and you know um so as far as uh again we have those upcoming workshops and again i'm going to go over them again we're excited to announce a diverse range of workshops and events at KJLR Sanctuary. Uh, our, um, I'm sorry here for a second. I'm adjusting something here. Sorry. The moderator will make this a little better, but right now I'm going to do this. <laughs> Hello, Mary. How are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. We'll get you on here one day to interview you. <laughs> okay. 
So our painting workshops are inspired by renowned artists. Again, David Hockney and Paul Klee offering participants the opportunity to explore their techniques and styles. Additionally, we have hands-on sessions exploring collage art, gel press printing, and other exciting techniques. These workshops cater to artists of all skill levels. Beginners are definitely welcome. It's really ideal for beginners, whether you're looking to hone your skills or try something new. Join us uh, to immerse yourself in a world of creativity and be a part of our growing artistic community. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about a couple of... Uh, let me get over here. This is Women's History Month. So one of my favorite women artists, oh my gosh, she's absolutely amazing. And that is Grandma Moses. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I got her little bio written here too for Grandma Moses. She is a freaking amazing. She started, this lady started painting at 78 years old. So I absolutely am like, just totally amazed. 78 years old and became world renowned. Hold on a second. Now, as I'm, <laughs> again, I'm fumbling through papers and everything. So that's a little bit about Grandma Moses. I'm going to bring a picture of Grandma Moses up for you, too. And I'm going to and then I'm going to get into telling you uh, about who this amazing woman was that started painting at the age of 78. OK, Grandma Moses born Annie Marie Robertson Moses on September 7th, 1860 in Greenwich, New York, was a renowned American folk artist whose remarkable life story captivated fame in the art world during her late 70s and 80s, becoming one of the most celebrated and beloved figures in American art history. Annie Mary Robertson, known affectionately as Grandma Moses, grew up on a farm outside of upstate New York. She displayed a passion for art from a young age, but her early life was marked by hard work and responsibilities on the family farm. Despite receiving minimal formal education, she cultivated her creativity through everyday experiences and observations of rural life. It wasn't until her later years after raising a family and experienced the ups and downs of life that Grandma Moses began to pursue painting seriously. I'm gonna get there and I'm gonna pull up a couple of Grandma Moses' paintings here for you to see it. I think we have some here from Grandma Moses, do we? So this is one of Grandma Moses' paintings. It wasn't until her later years after raising a family. Oh, oh, I went for that there. I'm sorry. Uh, in her late 70s, she, she took up painting as a hobby to pass the time during the winter months when farm work slowed down. Using simple materials like house paint and boards, she depicted. I'm going to bring up some more Grandma Moses images. Uh, she depicted scenes of rural life with remarkable detail and charm. Grandma Moses' nostalgic paintings often portrayed idyllic countryside landscapes, quaint villages, and scenes of everyday life from her memories and imagination. Her unique style characterized by vibrant colors, naive perspective, and intricate detail resonated with audience far and wide. In 1938, at the age of 78, Grandma Moses taught, caught the attention of the art an art collector who discovered her paintings displayed in a local drugstore window. This encounter led to the first solo exhibition at the Galleria St. Etienne in New York City in 1940, launching her career as a professional artist. Throughout the 1940s and 50s, Grandma Moses gained widespread acclamation and recognition with her paintings, exhibited in prestigious galleries and museums across the United States and abroad. Her charming depictions of rural Americana struck a chord with the public, earning her a devoted following and critical acclaim. Grandma Moses' remarkable success as a self-taught artist and her inspirational life story made her a cultural icon. Despite achieving fame late in her life, she remained humble and down to earth, continued to paint prolifically well into her 90s. Grandma Moses passed away on December 13, 1961 at the age of 101 
leaving behind a legacy of warmth, nostalgia, artistic brilliance. Her timeless paintings continue to captivate audience and inspire generations of artists, cementing her place as one of America's most beloved folk artists. Grandma Moses, freaking amazing, man. So I'm going to leave that picture up here, but I am trying to pull up a few other things. I think this is another one of our Grandma Moses paintings right here. So you can see, and she also reminds me a little bit of this artist. If you guys want to look at this artist, his name is L.S. Lowry. Uh, they, they're not exactly the same, but I like the way that they both paint. He's an artist. He was from out of, I think, Manchester, England, and his name is L.S. Lowry. I love art. I love artists. I love all different types of art. I love all different types of artists. Um, I, I encourage everyone to uh, really, really, uh, you know, if you if whatever art you like, it's okay. <laughs> um, and for artists, don't even worry about it because there, when you create, there's going to be someone that that art that you create resonates with. So don't worry about it. And as a matter of fact, that same artist, L.S. Lowry said one day, you know, you have a lot of people that they're artists, they'll do their work. He said, there's artists coming up to me saying, I can't sell my work. I can't sell my art. And Ellis Lowry went to them and said, well, nobody asked you to paint it in the first place. So what are you just doing? Just be happy and just go ahead and create and uh, allow that your, your energy to draw those people to you that would like your artwork and that resonate with your artwork and just stay consistent. So um, that's that. But anyway, let's get back over here. Let's up here. So, <clears throat> I have a series that's starting up. It's a it's called the Pencil Point and Abstract uh, Cityscapes that I'm creating for a couple of exhibitions I have coming up later in the year. One is going to be in New York uh, to be announced. That'll soon go up, uh, probably about two months before my exhibition, which is uh, going to be uh, mid fall, like late fall around October um, in New York. And then I have one exhibition that'll be at my studio um, this late summer. And that will be the pencil point people and uh, these abstract uh, cityscapes that I'm creating. So that's what that exhibition that I will be at my studio. And that date will be is a to be announced. I haven't decided on what day this summer I would like to do that, that series. The pencil point series delves into human expression and emotion through figurative collage paintings some in oil and some of them are in acrylic while the abstract cityscape uh captures the energy and landscapes of urban environments inspired by artists like one of the workshops i'm doing david hockney and this woman artist named jane slipka she's actually a living artist you should look her up her name is jane slip uh s-l-i-b-k-a uh you know and i love both of those artists i love their style i like the way they paint and uh, they're such an inspiration to me. Um, and uh, and it's okay as an artist to have uh, <laughs> be inspired from you know other artists. Uh, both series will be featured in an exhibition at my gallery studio in the early part, offering them a unique opportunity to experience these artworks firsthand. Plus, you get to come to my gallery and studio, where I have an abundance of artwork there that I've created. Also, I have different products. Which brings me to my next thing talking about products let's get to some of that shameless advertising that i plan on doing right now <laughs> because not only do i have original artwork that i create but i also have a gift shop on my website and we're going to go right in here and then i'm going to bring you back up the gift shop back up on the screen but in the meantime take a look at this little advertising. <laughs> While we proudly showcase the original artwork of artist Kenneth J. Lewis Sr., we also offer an array of other products to complement your artistic interests. From charming coffee mugs and elegant note cards to stunning prints and captivating published books, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Be sure to explore our diverse selection. As a token of appreciation, we're delighted to offer you a special discount. Simply click the link in the description and use promo code KJL10 at checkout to receive a generous 10% off your order. Plus, enjoy free shipping on orders totaling $50 or more. It's our way of saying thank you for supporting our passion for artistry. Start browsing now and enhance your collection with our unique offerings. We can't wait to see what catches your eye. Hashtag grateful, hashtag much love.
Awesome. Awesome. So listen, I'm going to share again with you my uh, podcast page. I'm at my uh, website page with you again. And uh, again, when you go into uh, uh, my podcast page, I'm at my website, rather. I'm sorry. So at your home page, when you come in, you're going to come up on a little bit like a little video that's showing here. And all across the top, you can see here I have original art, then I have shop. And all of my original art is not on the website. It's just impossible for me to have put all that art on here. I've done close to 6,000 paintings. Um, so, and, and a lot of the paintings are very large and some are mid-sized. People love coming to my studio. They get the opportunity to sit there and, uh, you know, I can bring out different pieces. You know, it's like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, type experience that they have. And uh, they get to see the stuff. Also, I do it on Zoom. Uh, if your person wants to come on Zoom and they want to uh, have an appointment to see some of my artwork on Zoom, I can put them on Zoom and, and uh, you know, show them some of my artwork. Okay, then my next page you have here is the, uh, this is the original artwork. So you will see uh, some images on this page. It's just popping up slow on here. But as you scroll down, you have some things there where you can see how the artwork looks in different environments. And I have a couple of the series there. But when you want to go, and usually my artwork, it even says on my website, original artwork from various collections is available to sell with each piece sold on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We regularly add new pieces to our collection, and each artwork comes with a certificate of authenticity to ensure its provenance. For pricing inquiries or to make a purchase, please click the collect contact email button or call the number below. That's what you'll see on the website. Now, when you go into my shop section here, what you'll see going on here is you'll come up on the gift shop. I'm not sure if there's a delay in it coming up on your end, but it actually, you know, it's a little slow here on this end. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but you have one thing that's uh, uh, for shopping for different products, which you saw the advertisement. Uh then we have workshops, which I, you know, went over with you. But then I have what's called the collector's page. This page is for, uh, it's for anyone that has purchased art from me that has become a collector. Uh, you have a special access to this page. You have to have a, a user email and a passcode to get into this section of my website. And then here we have the podcast schedule, which will list all of the upcoming podcasts. And uh, that's the schedule. And then... Usually the next podcast that's coming up will be on this page for live podcast. And then I have my blog page. You can see here if it pops up. <laughs> so Kenneth's blog and I think you'll be able to see as soon as it pops up on the computer. I'm sorry the computer's running slow, but it should be under life. I'm not sure if the blog went up. Maybe I didn't have a, a time on here. But uh, that blog should be popping up on here. See, that's dislocated. I probably have to go in and publish on my website for it to show on here. And then the last uh, section on uh, the website here is my exhibition schedule, which will be updated uh but you can, if you're in the local area, I my artwork is always hanging at Hamilton Township Library. I have 10 paintings in there. This is a picture you can see. Um, so I have 10 paintings in there at all time. And uh, then I switch them out, you know, every four or five months or so I switch them out. If I do sell one of those paintings, 25% will go to Hamilton Township Library. Then also you can see this is the studio, my studio here. You can see the front of the studio. 2,000 square feet studio, uh, 4th Street, Ewing Township, New Jersey. And then you'll see the upcoming schedule of the events. So I'm going to take you off the stage and come back to you. So that's what we have going on for that. So as we, um, so when I do these podcasts, there's different categories for this podcast. 
we have uh, artist interviews. We gain insight from talented artists and creators as they share their experiences and perspectives. Then we have the gallery and museum tours. This is where you can explore the rich world of art through virtual tours of galleries and museums and also live tours. What I've done is I've gone to about five uh, galleries and studios in New York recently within the last few months and I've gathered footage and I'm currently going to be uh, editing that and I'll be putting out uh, those uh, videos because sometimes a person can't make it to a museum and they really would love to see some of the stuff and, and kind of let um, have someone talk about some of the art there and that is what I do so look for some of those episodes coming up you know very shortly uh, make sure make sure again that you subscribe to my YouTube channel to see if I can pull it up here again if I have uh, the name up here but it's, it's artist Kenneth J. Lewis Sr. um YouTube channels and on there see right here see artist Kenneth J. Lewis senior channels and under that when you go in there you can see the categories artist interviews art history or art with Kenneth workshops because that's the other thing that I do is um, uh, besides the gallery tours we do the art history so we have Purvis Young that's coming up and since I'm on the thing of talking about Purvis Young, I did put up a little thing. This is an amazing guy. I can't wait to tell you the story of this guy. I'm almost fun putting, I'm almost finished putting everything together, but I'm going to give you a little glimpse of this guy. It's Purvis Young of Overtown, Florida, and that's him there painting. And this is what was called Good Bread Alley. Oh, we're going to get into all of that stuff when I do this documentary. And then this is the town because they ran a highway through this town that he lived in. And uh, we'll talk more about that as well. And these are his paintings lined up. The hundreds of them like on these streets that he did in Overtown, Florida. He's an icon there. And uh, this is one of his paintings as well. He painted on all types of materials and things. Something I like to do too was amazing. And then this is some of his artwork. So I'm so looking forward to sharing uh, that documentary, uh, that art history documentary on Purvis Young, Purvis of Overtown, Florida. Okay. So we're going to keep this moving right along. So I want to show you something. I was talking to you about some of the classes I'm going to be teaching. This is one of them is gel press printing. So we use the brayer and you can make all different types of interesting art, like, you know, things like this. It's layered. And I'm telling you, this will be a lot of fun. So to sign up for this workshop, all the materials are included. You don't have to bring anything but yourself. And uh, this is an idea like some of the stuff you can create within a gel press printing class is right here, as you see here. So we're going to walk through all of that stuff. These are pretty, and we use gel press plates. I have a bunch of material that was donated to me by the company that actually makes these plates. They donated um, 80 uh, gel plates. Uh, they donated uh, sprayers. They donated impressions. So I'm really grateful for that and uh, really looking forward to doing these workshops with individuals. By the way, we were talking about Purvis Young, but this is his episode that's coming up. I just have to adjust the date. It was for this week, but uh, I still have a little bit more editing to do. So I pushed this off for another week, uh, uh, his particular uh, podcast episode. Okay, so let's see what else we got going on here. It's kind of fun, kind of like doing this. I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything, but let's also see here. ticker up here okay I think I pretty much just covered about everything I wanted to do today again this was a last minute <laughs> uh, I had to make an adjustment for this uh, particular episode I hope you enjoy it I only got the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the things at my studio and everything another sip of my coffee I don't know why I do this all the time I get coffee and uh I don't drink it. I got to microwave it again. And I hate cold coffee. I don't even know why people drink iced coffee, but. Oh, what a nightmare. It's cold again. 
anyway. <laughs> and I left my thermos. So, so as we wrap up today's one interview, I wanted to um, remember to remind you to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you have this is my email, my website, my Instagram, and the YouTube channel, which this will be broadcast, if at all. You can see the ticker down at the bottom if you'd like to uh, support my channel. Uh, any donation is welcome. You know, it takes me a lot of time to edit the videos that I have coming up. It takes me a lot of time to prepare for these artists interviews and the channel is growing steadily. I found out that it takes a, a good well over a year to actually get a thousand subscribers. So, hey, you guys help me get there. I want to beat it before a year. <laughs> I'm four months in. OK, so um, your support helps us to reach more. Uh, people as you do this and please share as well lastly don't forget that our studio is open for studio visits where you can purchase art directly from me again um, I offer appointments for those interested in viewing my collection or discussing custom artwork so listen everyone uh, let me see here I think they were pretty much wrapped up for the day I'm, I'm, I'm moving like this because I have to constantly, I'm looking at the, uh, everything down at the bottom and I got to, you know, pull up, I'm working the controls as I'm trying to talk to you at the same time. And so, um, thank you all for tuning in to today's episode of KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast. Thank you for tuning in and remember to stay connected with us for all of our latest updates and announcements. Until next time, keep creating and exploring the world of art.